In December 2015, the world witnessed its first known power outage due to a cyber attack, leaving hundreds of thousands of homes without power for six hours. In 2013, hackers were able to breach the Bowman Avenue Dam in New York to gain control of the floodgates, a frightening thought. These attacks are happening at a more frequent rate, and all estimates point to this becoming a growing problem impacting energy, transportation, public services, telecommunications, and manufacturing. What if all it took to bring down the grid was malware getting into the wrong hands, and no one would know who caused it? Perhaps one of the most well-executed and equally scary attacks giving us a glimpse of the future is the Stuxnet virus. If I had to describe the story of Stuxnet briefly, I would say that it was equal parts one of the most impressive and one of the most terrifying digital stories that I have ever heard. In the cybersecurity world, malware is an infectious software designed to cause damage. This is typically data-oriented damage through the form of data theft. Ransomware, when files are held against the person's will in return for a ransom. And yes, sometimes malware is designed to cause physical damage. Stuxnet was originally discovered by Sergey Ulizin as a virus being spread through Microsoft Windows targeting Siemens industrial control systems, specifically targeting the Programmable Logic Controller, or PLC, which allows the automation of electromechanical processes like those used to control machinery, including gas centrifuges for separating nuclear material. To accomplish this, Stuxnet used four zero-day attacks, which are exploits only known by the attacker and no one else. These are incredibly rare, so the use of four of them is a massive deal. Stuxnet was also unique as it was spreading indiscriminately, even capable of spreading through air-gapped systems completely disconnected from the internet. It was also unclear what its payload was, as many people infected by Stuxnet reported no effects. In the context of malware, typically what we mean when we say a payload is what the malware is actually meant to do. You can think of it as uh, the nuclear little red button. Like, once you hit that red button, the nuclear payload is delivered. It was clear early on that unlike most malware, Stuxnet did little harm to computers and networks that didn't meet very specific configuration requirements. This was even described as a, quote, marksman's job to describe its sophistication, but it was still unclear what it was designed to do and who was responsible for it. As researchers began tearing down the virus, they not only learned of how complicated and targeted its inner workings were, but they finally discovered what the payload was. Symantec noted in August 2010 that 60% of the infected computers with the Stuxnet virus worldwide were based in Iran, and of those, the people reporting issues were part of Iran's nuclear program, specifically those using Siemens equipment. The mystery of the payload was nearly solved. Within nuclear power plants, Gas centrifuges spin endlessly to separate uranium-235 from uranium-238. These separations only take place while these centrifuges spin at certain frequencies, typically between 807 Hz and 1210 Hz. It was discovered Stuxnet was periodically changing these frequencies to 1410 Hz and then to 2 Hz, and then to 1064 Hz, slowing down and speeding up constantly. As this continued to happen, these centrifuges would wobble and tear themselves apart, causing almost 20% of Iran's nuclear centrifuges to be ruined. Another complexity to this was Stuxnet installs a root kit, which hides itself on the system and masks the changes in rotational speed of centrifuges, so operators were seeing the rotation speed as being normal when they weren't. This made it harder to discover there was anything happening to the centrifuges until they were completely destroyed. Rootkits are really scary. So a rootkit is basically a malware that kicks in before the operating system, and that makes them incredibly difficult to find and defend against or to remove once they're installed. This attack was so sophisticated that many experts believe Stuxnet required the largest and costliest development effort in malware history. There's no doubt the Middle East is home to a great deal of conflicts. Nuclear conflicts were also high during the 2000s due to Iran announcing they would begin the production of nuclear weapons. Pretty shortly after researchers discovered Stuxnet and its payload, they immediately speculated a massive world power was behind these attacks to prevent Iran in achieving its nuclear goals. Two notable countries were the United States and Israel. While this previously and continues to be unconfirmed, Many details have since been released, including the real name of Stuxnet, Olympic Games. 
a collaborative effort between the US and Israel to build this massive cyber weapon, which began due to a secret executive order by George Bush and was continued through the Obama administration, through this brand new branch within the NSA with the legal capacity for offensive cyber warfare. This is incredibly important, as most branches, including the NSA, only have the authority to act on a defensive level, at least technically speaking. This new branch, with presidential approval, was capable of launching offensive cyber attacks, Stuxnet one of the first, with the goal of secretly attacking a rival nation, hoping to get its hands on nuclear weapons. Stuxnet's impacts are widely up for debate. While 20% of centrifuges were destroyed, slowing down Iran's program, it wasn't long after for Iran to double down on their program and exponentially make a recovery. Some experts believe they overcompensated and have a stronger program today due to the attack. And while it's clear Stuxnet was partially successful, its long-term impacts are still unclear, and with it came the new uncertainty of cyber warfare. My personal opinion is that we are already living in a cyber world war, and because of the nature of technology, countries can act in relative obscurity. You know, if any given country drops a physical bomb on another country, it can be easily pinned back to them, and there are obvious repercussions. But when it comes to digital spaces, you can drop a logic bomb, and you can pretty easily make it look like someone else, or deny involvement, and there's not much anybody can do, so it's creating this really unique battlefield we've never seen before. Michael Hayden himself, the previous director of the CIA and NSA, stated, I understand the difference in destruction is dramatic, but this has the whiff of August 1945. Somebody just used a new weapon, and this weapon will not be put back into the box. Like any weapon, cyber warfare has now been released onto the world. While the US was targeting Iran with Stuxnet, they deployed a similar version of the virus within North Korea. Shortly after, it was discovered a Stuxnet-like attack also hit Iran's telecom infrastructure. A version of Stuxnet with the goal of capturing keystrokes and system information was also discovered in 2011. Now that the US, a world superpower, has used this technology, it means others are allowed to as well. And to this day, the US has made no public comment on its use of offensive cyber warfare creating an environment where people don't feel obligated to discuss treaties and rules involved with it. Scenarios of where cyber warfare can head are infinite, from losing power for days or weeks, to releasing water held together by dams, to poisoning our water supply, and even a possible nuclear winter. Former US Secretary of Defense William Perry notes that a nuclear war by accident is much more likely than Russia launching a first strike on the United States. An accident he believes could be caused by a virus like Stuxnet convincing leaders of a country like the US that they were being attacked with nuclear weapons when they weren't, starting a nuclear war by mistake. When we reflect on this story, it's natural to see Stuxnet as a sensationalized story of a virus that didn't truly achieve its goal. But the real story lies in the future beyond Stuxnet, the future of cyber warfare. This was the beginning of something so much greater, something massive, and something that impacts each and every one of us.